These programs may or may not feature crumpets and a touch of murder. Each and every one of you would have killed Cora Galaccio to stop our revealing your murder of Richard Abernethy. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 British crime shows. Learning to work with a new partner is always tricky. What? You and I were hardly the most likely combination. For this list, we're looking at the most fascinating series on British TV that revolve around unlawful or illegal acts. That's all it takes. That are usually or typically harmful to others and are thus punishable by law. And so now that we're ready, just do what you got to do. Number 10, The Fall. Two professional women in their early 30s killed in their own homes by strangulation. Gillian Anderson stars in this thriller set in Northern Ireland about a female copper on the prowl for a prolific serial killer. I haven't walked in here totally unprepared. The BBC crime drama instantly became a hit after its May 2013 premiere, which captivated viewers due to the charming presence of Jamie Dornan and his striking chemistry with his co-star. Unfortunately for both characters, the psychosexual antics of Paul Spector mean no love affair will be had. Well, at least let's hope not. Maybe it's not that he's devoid of emotion at all. Maybe it's the reverse. Isn't it emotion that the sexual sadist feeds on? When it's all said and done, The Fall will likely earn a cult following due to Dornan's role as Christian Grey in the adaptation of Fifty Shades of Grey. But The Fall stands on its own. Thank you, sir. Number nine, Cracker. She's dismissed you. She's dismissed you the way every woman has always dismissed you. There's nothing like a hard-drinking, chain-smoking, wise-ass gambler with a great nickname, at least on TV. All of these personal traits were rolled into one for Dr. Edward Fitz Fitzgerald, who also happens to be a mastermind criminal psychologist with excellent detective skills. Well, there's no brain damage and no organic reasons and he's claiming complete amnesia, I would say he's having his own. Cracker aired for three seasons during the mid-90s and explored the personalities working with the Greater Manchester Police, in between crimes, that is. And he hits you. Sometimes. But it's all right because he always says he loves you afterwards. Robbie Coltrane won three consecutive BAFTA awards as the lovable good guy, and audiences watched at the edge of their seats each and every episode. The letters are for you. The bodies are for you. She's trying to make you jealous. She's killed three people for you. Number eight, Luther. I'm a policeman, all right? I'm a policeman. See that? What does it say? It says I'm above your ring. Now back up! The incomparable Idris Elba previously starred in The Wire, arguably the finest American crime drama ever. New deal today. <laughs> You're going out on point picking up business in the pit. What? And also appeared in this poignant series about an obsessive detective chief inspector. After failing to arrest a female killer in the first episode, Luther turns to her for guidance because, well, that's what Luther does. Why are you here? I just needed a place to think. He's got it like that, for better or worse. The series ran from 2010 to 2013 on BBC One, with a two-episode special announced for the fall of 2015, proving that audiences can't get enough of Luther. If I take you with me, you'll do something stupid. You won't be able to help yourself. You'll have Natalie, right? Number seven, Agatha Christie's Poirot. Monsieur Shane. I would like to speak with you for a moment. While 24 episodes would be a good run for any television series, this epic British adaptation of the famed Agatha Christie character ran for 24 years. David Suchet was hand-selected by the writer's family and starred for 13 seasons as the Belgian detective with a fanciful mustache. And then arranged for his body to be cremated so that no evidence can be found. Award-winning actors such as Michael Fassbender, Emily Blunt, and Jessica Chastain once appeared on Poirot, and numerous actors often returned to play different characters. Apart from my train, my transcontinental train, would you find them? Um, Hungarian diplomats, Count and Countess Andrade. Spanning the course of four decades starting in 1989, the series finally wrapped up in 2013, thus leaving millions of fans across the UK with an enormous void.
Number six, Foil's War. I think we should get something straight right from the very beginning. You don't ask me what I'm doing. You don't ask me what I'm investigating. You simply take me to where I want to go. Is that understood? Mystery, intrigue, and murder. This ITV drama was set during World War II, but the real battle was between the titular character and the wise guys trying to put one over on their own people. Michael Kitchen starred as the Detective Chief Superintendent, a man living by his own code, yet determined to stand up against injustice. Foyle's War is so historically accurate that some viewers actually have to decompress after watching and remember that they aren't at war, but actually eating dinner in their recliner. Sorry, you can't come through. You don't understand, I live here. Ah, Detective Foyle. Stern, but fair. So, I've had enough of this, I'm going home. Number five. Midsummer Murders. Detective Chief Inspector Barnaby, this is Detective Sergeant Nelson. The setting, a fictional yet visually alluring county in England. The plot, you guessed it, Red Rum. Midsummer Murders premiered on ITV in 1997 and is based on the scrollings of Carolyn Graham. Although people die quite easily from episode to episode, the dramedy shows no signs of slowing down and continues to charge forth with DCI John Barnaby played by Neil Dudgeon. I'm just paying my respects. Who played DCI Tom Barnaby in the first 13 seasons. Joyce. He's lonely. I don't care if he's manically depressed, he's not sleeping there. Just for tonight. Not tonight, not ever. While the show's had some problems with diversity in the past, everybody and their grandmother seems to be content with their program. Well, I'm glad you're impressed. <laughs> Number four, Sherlock. The name Sherlock Holmes and the address is 221B Baker Street. Everybody likes to say the name Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, just as everybody likes to read his famous detective stories. But what happens when you throw a little Benedict Cumberbatch into the equation? Oh, just one of the best Sherlock adaptations ever. Yes, obviously. Each series of Sherlock consists of only three episodes, which means that England temporarily shuts down so the people can enjoy their Cumberbatch and co-star Martin Freeman to the fullest. Do people usually assume you're the murderer? Now and then, yes. The characters are pleasant, the writing is fierce, and the extravagant production typically causes one British head to explode per season. I didn't know I saw haircut, the way you hold yourself, says military. With your conversation as you entered the room. A bit different from my day. Said trained at Bart, so army doctor, obvious. Sherlock is serious TV. I'm not a psychopath, Anderson. I'm a high-functioning sociopath. Do your research. Number three, a touch of Frost. I'm Detective Inspector Frost, Denton CID. Revolving around a couple of old detectives getting the job done, A Touch of Frost premiered way back in 1992 and starred comedic actor David Jason as William Edward Jack Frost. How many are there, Linda? Men whose names you don't know. He's not a perfect character, as he was intending on leaving his wife in the first episode before she passed away, but he damn well tries his best. Jack, I don't think it's going to be long. The comedic banter between Frost and his horn-rimmed, spectacle-wearing boss provided for gut-busting laughs over the years until the 68-year-old Jason announced his plans to officially retire the character. Denton Police Station has always been a refuge, as well as a job for me. If zingers are your desire, then a touch of Frost will supply the goods. You've got a strange way of asking for my cooperation, Inspector. Yes, well, I'm not asking anymore, so. Number two, Inspector Morse. Down. I'm never down, Lewis. I'm the cheeriest chief inspector in the division. Everyone knows that. Oh. He's a renaissance man and a refined enforcer of the law. He enjoys the company of women, even though he suffers from a case of verbal diarrhea. No, 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 uh, two dozen. To be sent to Miss Gulladi's probate at the concert hall. Who is the gentleman of Oxford, you ask? Why, Inspector Morse. John Thaw starred as the clever character from 1987 to 1993, in addition to appearing in several specials thereafter, alongside the working class Sergeant Lewis, being played by Kevin Waitley. You're all right, aren't you, sir? Better off than Harry Rep, I suppose. At least I'll have a 
Retirement. Together, they became the masters of disaster for local criminals, as Ol' Morse utilized his exceptional memory skills to catch the bad guys. Don't cross this badass of the law, because he will make you regret it. Believe that. Nothing can save Mr. Bader's reputation, Miss Buscott. I don't think anything can save him, but you might still save yourself. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. So despite there being two police officers within five minutes, Carlton chose to call the station. He panicked, dialed 999, and got through the switchboard. But him and Fidel were old friends, why not call him? <sighs> not bad. Not bad, eh? Uh, not bad. This is a short statement to confirm that this morning, the body of an 11-year-old child was found on Harbour Cliff Beach at Broadchurch. And who certified the death certificate? Dr. Graham, I suppose. He didn't have any doubts, did he? He may have been influenced by the bottle of serenite tablets in the room. Of course, uh, was that attempted murder charge that was dropped? I held up doing that, so. You nearly choked the bloody life out of her. Number one, prime suspect. Timely, heavy, and undoubtedly difficult to resist. This drama series explored the personal and professional struggles of Detective Chief Inspector Jane Tennyson. Academy Award winner Helen Mirren starred in each of the seven series, which consisted of episodes that could reach 200 minutes or more in length. So what do you think? About what, sir? My voice suddenly got lower, has it? Maybe my knickers are too tight. Listen, I like to be called Governor or the Boss. I don't like ma'am. I'm not the bloody queen, so take your pick. Prime Suspect aired consistently from 1991 to 1996 and inspired numerous American dramas in style and form. We've got a witness. After a seven-year hiatus, Mirren reprised her role in 2003 and closed out the story with a thrilling final chapter in 2006. That Sally Sturdy, a murdered 14-year-old girl. You don't know anything about Sally. Prime Suspect simply operated on another level. You're not going to take that to school, are you? Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite British crime show? Ilya thinks you're the best man for the job. Then I'd better repay his confidence and find the killer. You've got nothing to prove, Lindy. For more mind-blowing top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. You're not bored now, are you?